Hello guys and welcome back. In this video I'll show you how to capture the Green Comet ZTF using the Dwarf 2 Smart Telescope. First you should use an astronomy app like Stellarium on the PC or phone to locate the comet in the night sky and take a photo or screenshot of the comet coordinates. If you can't find the comet, you can check also my older tutorial how to add comets in Stellarium. You also should check at what time the comet will be high enough in the sky to be able to capture it from your location. Best time to capture the comet is when the object is at higher altitude and this will give you also better quality images. Also, it's best to photograph it when you do not have the moon in the sky and in a region with low light pollution without using any filters. If you are in a city and have higher light pollution, you can use the USC filter, but you will lose some of the green color of the comet. Before you go outside, make sure you have the Dwarf 2 telescope charged. You do not want to miss the comet because of not charging the battery. If you have also a power bank, you can use an USB-C cable to charge the Dwarf 2 while imaging, so you will be able to use it all night. After the battery was charged, I took the Dwarf 2 telescope outside and attached it on a video tripod. Be sure you have also a dark frames library taken with the Dwarf 2 telescope. If not, cover the telescope and take dark calibration frames first. Once you have done these steps, you need to focus the telescope on a distant object like city lights. However, if the telescope is already focused on a distant object, you can skip this step and turn the telescope towards the night sky in an area with clear line of sight. Having the lens pointing between 60 and 90 degrees, something like this, so you will not have any obstructions and start telescope calibration without any problems. After calibration was finished, I selected Go To and pointed the telescope at a star cluster to manually focus on stars. I zoomed in on a star. Next, I selected the focus feature and touched the plus and minus until the star had the smaller size on my phone screen. This will give us a good focus and sharp images with good looking stars. Next, I selected Auto Go To and went to the second window, Manual. I entered manually the coordinates for the comet, right ascension array and declination deck, using the screenshot from Stellarium with the comet coordinates and after I selected Confirm to save them. On the first try, Dwarf 2 did not manage to find the comet and I got this message. Go to or calibration may hit the limit. This means that the comet was low in the sky and close to the horizon. Even if the comet was visible, it seems that the telescope did not want to go at the coordinates. If this also happens to you, do not get stressed. You just need to wait a little bit more. So I had to wait until Dwarf 2 was able to point at the comet and I decided to image a few deep sky objects like Coldwell 14, Beehive Cluster and the Great Orion Nebula until the comet will be high enough in the night sky. I checked often if Dwarf 2 is able to find the comet using the manual go to feature. Close to 2 am, Dwarf 2 was able to find for the first time the comet C2022 E3ZTF. And it was an amazing feeling to see the comet live on the screen of my phone. After you find the comet, before starting the live astrophotography plan, you have to select exposure time and gain. I selected exposure time of 15 seconds and gained 60. Next, I went at feature and started an astrophotography plan for the comet. If you want to have an accurate live stack with the comet, I recommend going with short plans, up to 15 minutes, because Dwarf 2 telescope will track the stars and the comet will move in the field of view. And if you decide to go with a long plan, you will notice artifacts to be able to get also a nice live stack image and have enough images for a comet time lapse. You should make also a long plan for the time lapse video. 
Here is an image stack in Deep Sky Stacker using the Comet Stacking method. I made also another stack with stacking on stars method. And here is the final processed image after blending the two image stacks and processing them in Adobe Photoshop. Using 300 images I took with the Dwarf to Smart Telescope, I made a video time lapse with the Comet ZTF that shows how it travels through space. I will also make available soon stacking and processing tutorials for the Dwarf 2 telescope and how to make a Comet time lapse video. Be sure to subscribe so you won't miss the future videos. I hope you found this tutorial useful and enjoyed watching. Now I will cover it so you won't get dust and I will charge it again because it got discharged after capturing the green comet. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.